Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Welcome to the house of the Lord here at Kissimmee Seventh-day Adventist Church. I have a number of announcements we're going to uh, proceed with at this very moment. The first thing that I want to share with you is it is that time of the year in which we begin the uh, process for nomination of the nominating committee. Through the board, we have cut out the organizing committee process. And straight coming to you today, and we're going to distribute right now, Jennifer, our communications coordinator, is handing out to you a slip of paper that actually has information and it lists the members of last term, our term is one year of service, last term organizing committee members and the nominating committee members plus the alternates. We are asking that seeing that list, you not reproduce names on the blank spot lines, that you actually will generate other individuals to serve on the nominating committee uh, team. And so we'll take all those nine, and from there, our goal here is going to be to go to five regular members and two alternates. So downstream things to simplify the matter. Is that, is that clear to everyone? And we're asking that you would please take and fill this out, and at the conclusion of this morning's worship service, Jennifer is going to be right at the inside. Jennifer is standing, and you see her? She's going to be at the inside. Fold it, please. Fold it. And it's up to you how many and how many sections you want to fold it. But just slip it, and she will take it. And we want to get that tally. And then our goal is to bring to you um, the report on the first Sabbath of June. Is that June 4th? Is that correct? First Sabbath of June, we'll have a first reading next Sabbath, and then on the 4th will be the final reading for the nominating committee. And folks, we need to move as quickly as possible. The current officers, ministry leaders, directors that have been serving, uh, officially their term ends on the on the end of June, and the beginning of July is the start of the new team of officers and ministry leaders, and so we want to make sure we get that going. Because of that, I want to state something that's very important. We are challenged. Department of Ministries, I have to tell you, we are challenged that we've been so busy in the month of May, and now that we're getting this process going, we're asking for you to be patient and understanding that we may or may not be able to have meetings of departments or ministries that will call us to have activities in the month of June. We will consider carefully, but we may need to say no because the work of the nominating committee is that important that we need to have that team have some days and other occasions free so we can convene and address what does the nominating committee do? Prayerfully looks at the best fit in the spiritual, in the areas of giftedness, dedication to the ministries and departments that will help move this church in the coming new year. We also believe that the word here says go, and that means that we're mobilizing our congregation to be more effective internally and externally in the community, and we are saying we need to pass the baton to leaders. We need more people at the table who are energized, younger. We need the wisdom of those who have years of experience, but we need those who've been serving for a long time to welcome and to also acknowledge the need for new leadership as well. So pray about that as we will be getting together with the new team eventually. So we'll turn that in. Today, as you can see, anytime you see the table, it's communion service. 
and it's a very special Sabbath together. This afternoon, immediately following, immediately following, go here and move to uh, a community service activity. Ukraine is in dire need of help. We can make a difference. Churches have been doing a lot of things all around. Today, we can be a part of a service project joining Celebration Church, Seventh-day Adventist Church. And for those who have already signed up, I don't know what the current uh, uh, application or reservations has been. We are looking at taking the bus. Our brother Dale, Dale, will you raise your hand? He's going to help us. And we're going to leave at 2.20 today from the parking lot, drive to Celebration, food packing initiative, 100,000 meals are being packed. So you get to rub shoulders with brothers and sisters from the other congregations all around the Orlando, who knows from other areas. And for those going on the bus, our goal is from 3 to 5.30. If you want to stay behind and you need a ride, you'll make arrangements, and you can serve up to 8 p.m. tonight. But for those who are on the bus, we're going to give two and a half hours. If you already know how to get there, you want to take your vehicle, please go forward and join. Thank you. This is going to be a very special time. Let me get a show of hands. How many have made plans and are wanting to go, planning to go today? How many are planning to go? Will you raise your hands? There's a few, and I know we'll have more folks. Okay, praise the Lord. So remember that. Uh, those who are nearby, just get a little meal at home. Come back and join us. We leave at 2.20. On the dot, right, Dale? And we'll be heading out. Thank you. Also, folks, um, the address is right there. It's 404 Celebration Place, Celebration, Florida. And the time it shares, um, just some information for you. So you want to take a quick snap, a, a picture of that? You can. Going once, going twice, so three. And that is it. Okay. On June 18, we have the bus coming. And it's the Advent Help Blood Mobile Drive. They're going to be right here on the grounds. We are asking if you are willing to help give life to others by allowing a little bit of life from you to go by donations of blood, okay? And if you can do so, please plan for that at our website. We have already posted, and I'm grateful for Sister Jennifer. She's already posted at the Adventist Community Service web, uh, section of our website. You can go to the very bottom. You can make reservations. In the foyer, there's a sign-up sheet. We would love it if you would sign your name and add yourself to that list. You can do that today as you exit, right there. We're looking to uh, get a good group and make this a community outreach as well. So that is a great opportunity. I also want to mention that Red Zone is heading out next weekend. So we want to pray for Shirley, Melisha, Adventures, Pathfinders, as they head out to spend a wonderful time camping, right? And with a lot of drills, and a lot of activities. How many enjoy what we recently witnessed here? What a wonderful Sabbath, amen? How many the blessed? If you yeah. covered, it was an awesome time together. And so, also, um, I believe all the information, even the one that I might have left out, folks, we have right here about the bus, the, the van, I mean, the bus for uh, Evan Health. There are requirements, and you will be screened health wise, and if you pass, you can donate, but there's specific information. Also, those who can, based on age, okay? So go to the website, take one of these, and I believe that is it. Um, at this moment, we are going to get ready and ask our praise team. We're glad you're going to lead us in adoring our Lord, worshiping Him together. So we will go forward. Blessings, everyone and what the Lord has in store for us. They said it's going to rain. Uh, I don't know if it's already been raining. But if it does, let it be showers of blessing for us. Amen?
seven.
together on this Sabbath day. We have come into your house, a house of praise and of prayer. In this gathering, we invite your Holy Spirit to be with us, Lord, that we might sense and feel your presence, that we might hear your voice and come closer to one another as well as to you. Lead us in every aspect of this worship and of this communion service. For we pray this in the precious name of Jesus our Lord. Amen. 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 There's so much that's happening in our world and all around us. 
And we know that there is a promise from the Lord to send us in due time His presence, His peace, and His saving grace and power. And today we are going to be led into prayer by our brother Rick Waters. Glad to have you, Rick, as you lead us as we pray, as we come before the Lord. We know we have in the house of the Lord men and women in need for healing and restoration. Our community, friends, we're praying for. Good morning, congregation. Good morning. It's always a blessing to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Especially for me when it comes to doing the congregational prayer. Something like that. So I'm going to ask those of you that are able to. Bow down, please do so. That's only if you're able to. Please bow. Each and every one of us. Now we can testify of your goodness. 
And even though I'm back to the Lord, you might withhold something from us for a season. We know, Lord, that at the end, you will always bless us because you, you want the best. And you only want the, 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 our, the, our goodness. But you want your goodness to be a part of our lives. So we praise you, we give you thanks, Lord. Bless those who have given. Bless those and bless the Lord who are searching for work. Bless those who, the good who don't have to give. And we ask the the Lord that you always know the best. And you always provide. Your aunt and God, we put our trust in you. In Jesus' name. Okay, once again, today's scripture reading is from First Corinthians, chapter fifteen, verses three through five. For I deliver unto you, first of all, that which I also received, and that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. And he was seen of Cephas, taken of the twelve.
Thank you, Sister Myra, Sister Julene. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. How are you doing? Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to take a moment here and share with you a message. In fact, it's more of a, a sharing from a pastoral heart to you parents. How many parents are here this morning with us in worship? Amen. Remember, we also have on Zoom. We also have on Facebook. I want to say hello to everybody. We're going to take a moment here. I'm going to talk about the Lord's Supper and on to the next generation. The next generation. It's amazing even today. I grew up watching Star Trek. Anybody watch Star Trek when you were kids? Yeah, right? And then they have Star Trek and it continues on. I mean, the old cast is no longer there, but you've got a new cast, but Star Trek continues, right? The next generation. And the same thing with Star Wars. What about the church of Jesus? What about we as a people? I want to share with you about the Lord's Supper. It's an uh, interest I have because I believe, and let's see, we're, we're all set, we're good. Yep, uh, man, there we go. Remember this scene? How many of you have seen the, the Ten Commandments, right? Says Cecil B. DeMille. Cecil B. DeMille. Uh, the Moses. And here is Moses. And they're gathered because it is the Passover. And families are all in the home. And uh, don't go to sleep now. All these lights going off, huh? I, I think some of them will be uh, brighter. Okay, thank you. And so the next generation. How important it is to pass to the next generation the baton. How important it is that we continue from one generation to the next to share our faith. Amen? Amen. Anybody here ever uh, ran track and field and, and any of those events? I used to do uh, some running there. It was a short distance. We did some relays. And in the relays, you had four, four who were running. And we did a state championship race, and I was one of those legs. And I remember we would practice because we would, we would receive the baton, the first leg, the pass the baton, and you had to be ready, folks. You had to have your hand out, and you had to be ready. And you could only run a little bit, waiting, and then shoot off. And you wanted to make sure you passed it from one to the next. The Lord wants us to share our faith and pass it on. Let's read this together. In 1 Corinthians 11, 23, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread. Paul says, I received from the Lord and I also pass it on to you. Paul was a faithful servant of the Lord. He passed. He shared. He relayed the stories to the congregations. The Jews. The Gentiles. The Jews already knew. The Gentiles needed to know the story. And he would share with them all the beautiful stories of the Bible. And here what we find is that the Bible background to what we are celebrating today, the Lord's Supper, is really coming from the Passover, the Passover meal. And so they knew, every Jew knew the Passover. And every boy and girl knows the story of the Passover. Every adult knows that story. I mean, today we have the advances in technology where we can actually view it and hear it. Uh, we have the Ten Commandments movie. Or we had the Prince of Egypt. I like both versions, right? Of course, they're not all accurate and perfect, but that's okay. They're trying to convey the story of how God delivered his people. And today I want to speak to you parents, leaders, and I want to take a moment and I'm going to transition because I want to speak to the kids. And I'm going to invite all the kids to sit right here where it says reserve, and I want you to come up. But before I do that, Let's look at Exodus 12, 25. It says, and it will come to pass when you come to the land which the Lord will give you, just as he promised, that you should keep this service. This was the Passover, the Passover that was being referred to. 
You shall keep it. And it shall be when your children say to you, what, what does it say, church? Let's read it. What, what, what do you mean by this service? It was a given by God saying to parents that a child, in fact, the youngest child, the youngest child was to ask in the home, in the Passover, through all the ages, Father, Papa, Daddy, why are we having this service? Did you notice that? What do you think of that? What does that say to us? God is stating to us that He wants children to ask questions. What do you think about that, church? Amen. So many not to have you ever had that kid that always said, why? 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 Why, 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 why? And then you might come to the point where you just uh, realize, oh, this child asks a lot. God wants our kids to be inquisitive. Amen? He does not shut them down. He does not shut them off. He created us all, praise the Lord, to ask questions. He made us with a mind. And I don't know about you, but, but I recall even growing up, I like to take things apart. I didn't always put it back together the right way. But I wanted to know how does it work. I remember my folks got a TV, and I used to look and say, do they have little people inside that? <laughs> and I went to the back of it, and I, I said, where are they? They're so tiny. So I had to open the back. And my mom said, you're going to get electrocuted. Inquisitiveness. He created us. He encourages from generation to generation. And notice the next part. That you shall say. Now, the kids ask. Our responsibility, the parents, mom and dad. Some of you are raising your kids alone. Oh, it's, it's, it's so much better if you could do it together. But... For circumstances, situation, you are mom and dad. You are grandpa, grandma. You are guardian to that child. And they were told, as we are told, you are to say, oh, it's the Passover sacrifice of the Lord. He passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt. That was when he struck down the Egyptians. And he delivered our families. And so the people, notice as they, they were told, this is what you're to do. And my folks, God is good. He says to us, listen, I know you'll forget. And I don't want you to forget. And if you forget, they will not know. And they may be good with you. One generation has stood for the Lord. But what's going to happen no more generations of faith of men and women who are able to know the story but especially experience a relationship with God. It's not that how do you and the cumulative knowledge of God, it's that we personally know our God reigns. My God is good. I know Him. And so it says that when the people heard this, they bowed their heads. I wonder if that meant they were saying, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We accept. And notice the rest. Then the children of Israel went away and they what? Did so. Just as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron, so they did. Now, every generation, here's that little girl. She's like, why? Why is it that today we have this table up here and it's not down at the bottom or in the back. Why is it that it's stressed up? What's under there? What is this all about? What does this mean to me? What does this mean to us? Some might say and take the stance of this woman because I said so, that's why. You ever done that? After all those questions, you said, because I said so? <laughs> well, the Lord wants us to give a reason. In fact, it says, if somebody were to ask you, 
Why do you believe in God? It says, be ready to what? Give an answer. Give a reason for the hope that is what? In you. So imagine if we are told to tell others why we believe, why we pray, why we support the work of the Lord, why you were recently baptized, why you still are faithful to God, even when things do not happen the way you want them to be. Give a reason. Children, they are a gift from God to us. Amen? Amen. Children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren. And the rest upon parents and grandparents to come and be there for them. Let's read this together. You know it. Train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he's old, he will not. Notice that. By the way, is this optional or is this a command? command. It is a command, Dale. You said it. This is as much, thus saith the Lord of the Ten Commandments, as what God is saying in Proverbs. Train a child. Notice, train them what? Up. What does that mean? That means that this is an ongoing process. From And when do you start? I was sharing this with the school. Do you start on the first day of school with a child? No, you start before that. And what? how long do you say, well, until that's it? Until they're out of here. How many here are still training up a son and daughter and they're up there, right? They're not little ones, but we still have a role. And they may change and we have to adjust. Because we provide counsel, but we start with instruction. We start in guidance until they mature. By the way, what's the sign of maturity? Well, they need ultimately every man and woman to be become like Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. That's the goal. Yeah. I think they can see it. I'm afraid they'll go to sleep here and take a nap. But that we are in a process and it's ongoing. Train up a child in the way he should go. In the way the child should go. Wait a minute. The way the child wants to go? No. The way the Lord wants the child to go. The fear of the Lord is the? And the fear of the Lord starts with his word. That's why the scriptures must be first. And foremost in our thinking, in our hearts, in our minds, it must be the center. It says here, train up in a way, not that the child wants to go, not the way the world wants to go. There is a pull from outside and there's a pull. I'll do it my way. God say, yield your heart to me. And I will show you. Jesus said that he is the way, the truth, and the life. That he is the one that shows us a path, a path of dedication, of service, of love. That no child and no adult lives for themselves, but they live to honor God. And they live so their lives can bless others. Even today, what a blessing. We have an opportunity. I don't know about you, and I, and I know this, you know this. What happens, Brother Wayne, if you don't exercise those muscles? They get weak, they atrophy. They they break down, right, Manny? They'll break down. They will, they will not be able to accomplish what they are designed for. And so they need exercise. And today, folks, we have an opportunity to exercise together by going out in the afternoon and joining at celebration. This is a little commercial plug in, that's okay. And we go, and we go and buy some cars, and we're going to go out there and pack some lunches to help Ukraine. Amen? Amen? So we need, and we tell our children, we provide it. But here's the thing. We can say it, but if we don't do it, because it's not just talk, it's what? Talk. It's by our example. And so we talk about Passover, which had... Um, the unleavened bread, and 
And of course, they, they also had a, a, a lamb in there because the lamb was pointing to the lamb of God, the deliverer. We are sandwiched. We are from the Old Testament. They spoke about him who would come. You and I go back and we say, he has come. The deliverer has come. Jesus the Christ. Like John said, behold, the Lamb of God takes away the sin of the world. And so the family together acknowledging in all these emblems, they all point us to Jesus. Just like in the past, all of it was foretelling. It was instructing us he'll come. I want to share a few misconceptions. Why is it that as parents, we might feel hesitant to invite, allow, grant that a son or daughter take part in the Lord's Supper? Why is it that there tends to be a hesitancy? Maybe some concerns. Number one, you're too young. You are way too young to take part. Interesting. I've searched all throughout the scriptures, and have you found an age that the Bible mentions? No, not at all. But it is important that they grasp what does this mean. So our work, your work, is to assist them by giving them in accordance to their capacity little understanding along the way of the significance and we start to realize something. They're smart. Amen. They are bright. These kids of today know how to handle our, the phones and all these gadgets and you and I go, how do you do that? There is immense ability but we also believe and that's knowledge and that's skills but spiritual understanding comes from the Lord. And you and I pray for them, Lord, open their minds. Help them to see, and we will come to their level. I love it. If we're speaking to children, we come to their level. You know why we do that? Because we have been taught by the greatest of all servants, Jesus Christ, that he came to our level. And we meet them where they are. That's the whole methodology of, of the sharing of God's word. We meet people where they are. We don't leave them where they are until they can be drawn. Jesus said, if he is lifted up, he will what, folks? Draw. He will draw. And Jesus wants to draw your sons and daughters. Amen. Your grandchildren. He is interested in saving. So too young. No. Adjust. And work with them and assist them. Gauge where they are. Not baptize. In fact, even for adults, I've heard this. Well, we don't have communion for everybody. They have to have been in the waters of baptism. If they haven't given their heart to Jesus Christ, they cannot. The Bible doesn't say that, does it? But some believe, no, you cannot give it to the unseen. Well, let me ask you, how will they ever come to salvation? Children, we're preparing them for eternity, and guess what? Eternity starts here and now. Amen? It is here now, not later. In fact, some, quite often we say, oh, the leaders of the church are out there for tomorrow. No, the leaders of the church are here right now. And we're thinking tomorrow, tomorrow is not promised. Today is the day. Salvation is granted an opportunity so that even those who have not been baptized will be ready and be prepared for baptism. But may I say something? This is a many baptism. How many know that already? This is an opportunity where you may have said, oh, when I watched those kids and adults going into the waters, I felt like I wanted to go under too. Well, guess what? Today you can come under the anointing and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Because Jesus is here today. He promised if you will seek him, you 
will find him. And you might say, I'm far, but he is near. And I've gone way, but no matter what, the arm of the Lord is here to reach everyone. So, not baptized? What a great opportunity. I'm not here to force any parent. I'm not here to try to tell you what to do. It is not my job to force your hand. It is my job to instruct you. It is my job to encourage you in the word of the Lord. It is my, the call of the Lord to me to say to you, do not put off what you can be about doing right now, day after day after day. Oh, fear of condemnation. Oh, Lord, Pastor, it says in the book of Corinthians that anyone who does not enter into communion in an unworthy manner, they will receive a condemnation from God. And the Bible does say that there's some people who got so sick. See, remember the days of the church department. You know what they were doing? They were treating it like an all-you-can-eat buffet. Now, that must, they must not have been at the Adventist one where our little bread is small. <laughs> and, our, and our grape juice is short, it's short, right? They must have had big ones and large pieces, right? And but Paul says, when you come together, you jump ahead. No, don't do that. If you're hungry, eat at home. I think of that at baptism. I had somebody who got baptized and a year later said, I need to get baptized again. I go, what do you want, bath? <laughs> this is special. This is about connection with God, about forgiveness, about new beginning, about moving forward and developing. It's a process. And so fear of condemnation, may I say, you worry if your child may they mistreat it. Analyze them. I have found in the young people in churches a lot of tender hearts, open hearts. I've seen some kids who are who take the things of the Lord so seriously. I've seen adults who, who trivialize the things of the Lord at times. And so Let's, let's be careful. The Bible says that in the love of God there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Now, I'm going to talk to the boys and girls. I want to say something to them. But you might say, uh, well, maybe, maybe there's a lack of understanding. Could it be that you are afraid or maybe you don't know? How do you answer those questions? It's never too late. Here's a beautiful book. You know it. Start reading Exodus and read the account of Exodus and Deuteronomy. Read Corinthians and see how the Lord says to tell this account. Do you know the Passover is the most repeated story in all of the Bible? You see it all throughout in the Garden of Eden. You know what you see? As Adam and Eve are leaving at the gate of the garden, we are told that they will come to present themselves and they will bring an offering. Interesting enough, there were two angels at the gate indicating as they're leaving, this is the path back to the Garden of Eden. Talking about the sacrificial system and the God who's calling people back to a new life, holiness. So, God is calling and inviting. I want to say this and I want to start inviting soon. Boys and girls, get ready to come up here. In fact, I'm going to invite you to come up here. Uh, Anna, can you go ahead? Thank you so much. I invited Anna to play a little bit as you're coming. Sit right here. Boys and girls, parents, come in to me for just a moment. Have a seat right over here in this area. This might work too. Just sit over here in the back also. Sit right there. As you're coming up.
people. Look what it says to you, boys and girls, adults, everybody. What does it say? What about him? He was baptized. Wasn't he? We believe so. All the disciples were baptized, immersed, right? Oh, and was he old enough to understand? He understood. In fact, he had such knowledge and skills that the apostles, the disciples looked up to him. Here he is. He had been with the Jesus at the communion meal, the Lord's Supper. And he looks like what's happening to him there in the corner. He's leaving, right? He just had the meal with Jesus. But you know what happened, boys and girls? He was leaving because he planned. And he spoke to some leaders and he said, I got a way to turn in Jesus to you. You want him? They said, yeah. And they paid 30 pieces of silver for Jesus to him. Wow. He sold out Jesus. He betrayed Jesus. Let me ask you this question. Why did Jesus not kick him out? Did he not know what was in the heart of Judas? He did. He could have said, if there is somebody that is not fit to take part in the Lord's Supper, it's you, Judas, get out of here. But he didn't do that, did he? You know why? Because Jesus was knocking at the heart of Judas. And he was wanting Judas to have a relationship and accept Jesus. They said how that turned out. But why I bring this up? Because you might feel that you're a Judas. You might feel unworthy. Or you might even think somebody's unworthy. That is not for you to determine. And if you feel unworthy, may I say to you, I do too. But greater is God's love for us than all the sinfulness of our lives. And he forgives us if we come in our own. So, let's go over here and watch this little video. Let's put it up there. Thank you so much. Watch this little video here. As the day of the Passover celebration drew near, the chief priests and the teachers of the law began to look for ways to get rid of Jesus. As Jesus had traveled around teaching and preaching all across the land, many people had begun to follow him, which made the religious leaders worry that they would lose their power. Then Satan entered Judas Iscariot, one of Jesus' disciples. Judas went to the chief priests and the officers of the temple guard to come up with a way to betray Jesus. Delighted at the idea of getting one of Jesus' trusted disciples to help them, they agreed to pay him for his assistance. Judas then waited for an opportunity to hand Jesus over to them when there wasn't a crowd around to witness what happened. On the day of the Passover celebration, Jesus sent Peter and John to find a place for them to have their Passover meal. Jesus told them that inside the city, they would find a man carrying a jug of water who would lead them to a room where they could prepare the meal. They left and found things just as Jesus had told them. <laughs> when the meal was ready, Jesus sat at the table with his disciples. Jesus said to them, I am so thankful to share this Passover meal with you before I suffer. I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. And he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the supper, he took the cup and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. But the man who is going to betray me is sitting at this table. I will carry out my mission as it has been ordered, but sadness and misery will come to the man who betrays me. The disciples looked at each other and began to question which one of them would do such a thing. The disciples then began to question which of them was the greatest of Jesus' followers. Jesus said to them, 
Kings selfishly use their power over their people, and rulers unjustly give favor to some. But you are not to be like that. Instead, the greatest among you should be humble and serve others. Jesus continued, saying, For who is greater, the person who sits at the table and is served, or the person who serves? It seems obvious that the one who is served is greatest, but I am among you as one who serves. You have stood by me in my trials. I give to you a kingdom, just as my father gave one to me, so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Alicia, will you uncover for me here? Thank you. And so I wanted to take a moment with you all, and I wanted to share with you this table. We have just a few items in a way similar to what's at this table. And so I don't know about you, but I like bread. Do you like bread? Yeah. I like bread. And and at that table, we have bread. The, the difference with this bread is that this bread is bigger. <laughs> and it's puffed up. Uh, it has leaven. That bread is flatter. And Jesus, we're told in the Bible that God wanted his people to prepare the bread fast. Because under the Passover, God was going to take them out. And they, they couldn't wait for the bread to rise. So it had unleavened. Uh, unleavened. So it's flatter. But, you know, like, I, I wanted to show you. When we have the communion meal, this is so special that the bread is special. It's not like this bread, although you know what bread does? What does bread do? It nourishes us, doesn't it? Bread has become symbolic of a meal. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. You have breakfast in the morning, at least maybe lunch, right? And dinner. You need it because without it you get weak. Jesus is your strength. And he wants you every day to spend time by reading his word. You see this little thing here? This is how the word used to be before, in a scroll form. Today I have it in the Bible form. But the word of God. Jesus said, if my words live inside of you, you're going to have what? Life. And what kind of life? Everlasting life. So when we have communion, we're saying, Jesus... I want you living in me. So that's why this is not potato chips. I like potato chips, but this is not potato chips. This is not rich crackers. This is not one of those I just, you know, toss it in the air, pop it in my mouth. I treat this with respect. You know why? Well, let me ask you, is this really the body of Jesus? Is what's under here really the body of Jesus? No. How many times did Jesus die? Oh, you guys are so smart. Jesus died once, but he said, take and eat this bread. This is my body. He's not saying it becomes my body. He is saying it represents my body. It's just like when you see McDonald's. How do you know it's McDonald's? You see the what? The sign. This is a sign. A sign reminding us Jesus gave his, his body for me on the cross. That's when he said to them, eat. And they thought, I would eat Jesus? No. Receive me. Every time you eat of this communion meal, you are saying, Jesus, you are my power. You are my strength. I know you got muscle. Let me see that. You are. That's sure. Yeah. Jesus, you are my strength. You are my power. Oh, and over here. We got something also. What's this? It's blood. It's not. But Jesus said, take and drink. This is my blood. Is this really the blood of Jesus? No. I mean, I got to tell you, we're not made to drink blood, right? But Jesus used it because what does blood do for us? It helps us. It carries nourishment, right? Oh, what happens if the blood of your body were to go? 
what would happen to you? You would die. That's why we're even having a blood drive. Because we believe that we can make a difference in helping other people who were in accidents so they could get blood. But here is the great story. Jesus said, take and drink. So Jesus wants us at communion to have an opportunity to remember, Jesus is my strength. Jesus is my life. He is my all. Does that make sense? Jesus. What did Jesus do on the cross? He died. And what came out when they jabbed a spear? They said, water and what? Jesus gave his blood, his life, for your life. What do you think of that? How wonderful is our Savior. Amen? So when we take part in this, we don't treat this like, oh, look, it's like, um, you who or Mountain Dew, or whatever drink, Fanta, Coke. or Coke. No, it's not like that. You know, you can have, if your parents allow you, those things. <laughs> but this is so important, it reminds, and here I close. Jesus says, as often as you eat, and as often as you drink, you are telling others and the world Jesus died for who? For me. For you. And you know what Jesus is saying? By doing this and over and over as many times as we do it you're telling the world you also believe Jesus is coming back. How many believe that? You believe that? I believe it. I'm looking forward to being. One day I'm not going to be at that big banquet meal. It's going to be a table that is so long and so wide. And we're going to be together. You know who I'm looking forward to seeing? I'm looking forward. I'm going to sit right with you guys. I'm going to be somewhere out there. But I'm going to look at Jesus and he's going to take the cup. He's going to have a cup to drink. And it's the cup of celebration saying all the suffering, all the pain, all the dying. It's over. I make all things known. I want to pray with you right now. I am asking your parents to consider giving you an opportunity to take communion. But I am asking you to take it as beautiful and as special as it is, seriously. Would you do that? Amen. All you do is say, Lord, Jesus, is there anything in my life? Have I been lying? Lord, have I, have I been disrespectful to my mother and father and maybe I've been mistreating my sisters and brothers? I ask you to forgive me, Lord. I ask that you would cleanse my heart, give me a good heart, and help me to walk and live in a way that honors you. I accept that you died for me, Jesus. You are my strength. You are my life. And I love you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. You can go back to the seats with your family.
they broke bread. The holders would just break a few of these. And we're going to invite our deacons and deaconess. We hold open communion. Bible says, examine yourself. And our Lord is always ready to receive us as we come to him. The deacons and deaconesses are going to give and hand out or give to you so that you can take this emblem of bread. to you please take and hold until you are invited to eat together. sister, you've been praying for Elvira. This week, in fact, I believe it was Thursday, she texted me, and you know she's been battling with cancer. There's been miracles that God has been doing there, and she just said, I want you to know I came for my exam, and it's in the kidney, Jane? The liver. The liver, the liver, actually. State said two tumors are gone, and there's still some, yeah. a little bit left. And they said, do you want to stop? And she says, no, we're pressing forward. Amen. And she wanted me to tell the Simi Church family, thank you for your prayers. Amen. Your prayers Amen. Hello? Hello? Yeah. 
Good morning, happy Sabbath. Um, just wanted to share a quick testimony. A couple years ago, God gave me a revelation in reverse of the, the Fourth Commandment and the whole Sabbath issue. Um, and he's been using me to present this to my family. My brother's been receptive, um, but the rest of my family, not really. And it's actually caused fights and arguments over this. <laughs> so I just more so wanted to ask for prayer, just as a whole, just so you guys can keep Hector's family in prayer in reverse to God's commandments and, and obeying his word and not the traditions of the world. So uh, just asking for prayers for my family to come to God's truth about his word. Amen. Hello, good morning. My name is Ashley. Um, we're new here. This is my son Zane and my mom Gladys. Um, I, sorry, I get emotional. I'm running from an abuser that tried to kill me and my son. Um, we've been homeless for a year and we just found a home. So we're looking for a church to take us in. Sorry. I've been holding on to my faith for my family. And we just found a home like two weeks ago. And I just want to thank God because without him, I wouldn't have been able to do it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, young man. scripture reading for the breaking of bread. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had, <clears throat> and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to be a part of this because, Father, it is through thy Son that redemption was made back to you. The pathway was turned around, Lord. There was a pathway given to us. 
So Jesus took the bread and let us take the bread, a symbol of his body. Let us eat. At this moment, we'll continue with any testimonials if anyone has any that they want to give. Testimonials? One from Sister Luella. If not, I have one. Let me let me ask the little children. Do you know what a Pomeranian is? Who knows what a Pomeranian is? It's a dog. Okay. Now let me tell you a story about my life. <coughs> Some of you have heard this before, but it's been expanded. <clears throat> uh, my daughter, when she was coming up, she had some medical issues. And <clears throat> She thought she could not have any kids, but we prayed on it. And one day she came to us and she brought us three little Pomeranians, the little browns and little blacks. And she said, Mom, Dad, this is as close as you're going to get to grandkids. <laughs> so I got three little Pomeranians. And here two years ago, my daughter came to the house. <clears throat> she had my wife and I. A, um, I believe it's an ultrasound. And this ultrasound showed two beings. Oh, wow. Two beings. Amen. She was having twins. Amen. The unfortunate side of that was at the time she told us this, two months before, my wife was diagnosed with cancer. And uh, <clears throat> She being an RN, 
Lujan get into the medical records and look at her records. And not want to say anything to me, she was downstairs crying this night. I didn't know it, but my black Pomeranian that was upstairs with me in the room, and all of a sudden he ran downstairs. And at that time, because I was listening for him, and at that time, my ears came attuned to the wife crying. So I went downstairs to see what it was. And she told me, she said, I have cancer, and for the diagnosis that it's portraying, on the average, you probably got like five months to less than a year. And now she, she finds out that our daughter is having twins, and she might not have an opportunity to see them, at least to the point of growing up and uh, intermingling with them. Well, that was in 2019. This is 2022. There'll be three in November. So not only have we seen them grown, but I'm going to have them most of this month, too. So it's been a blessing. Now, to update you on that, on the 1st of March, on my son's side, they blessed us with another granddaughter. Amen. And I have two granddaughters and a, a son, a grandson. And it's, you know, these are gifts. They're, they're, not, they're not mine. I love them. But that was what God's gift to us. Amen. And we are so happy that they were all born with all their mental faculties. Amen. And I want to say to my sister Myra, because I know they're expecting a grandchild here shortly. <clears throat> Take your vitamins. <laughs> I tell you, I'm at, I'm at a point now when I was coming up, I was heavy into the weightlifting, and that's now taking a toll on me. Because when I'm down on the floor playing with them, by the time they get up and run in another room, we're at that still trying to get off the floor. <laughs> so, but God is blessing us. He's blessed us with three grandchildren. We love them all. And hopefully one day, I'm hoping, Pastor, for July 23rd, we have one more. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. I just want to thank God for a successful end of year for the students, especially my two girls. And I praise God for all the hard work the teachers put in, and my kids did so well, and I'm grateful for that. So I just want to thank God for that. I want you to praise God for me. Thank you. The scripture reading for the wine is taken from 1 Corinthians 11, verses 25 and 26. 
And he says, after the same man also, he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do be as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. Amen. Let us pray. We can just move it from verse this man. Understand. Heavenly Father, Lord, we praise you, we give you thanks. We thank you for our Lord and our Savior. We thank you, Lord, for the sacrifice that he has done by shedding his blood and covering his cross for each and every one of us. So we can have eternal life. And Lord, even though this is a symbolic of what he has done, Lord, he do shows his death till he comes. Lord, it reminds us every day of how he was always given, even giving up his life, so that we can be with him and have eternal life. We praise you this morning. We thank you for everything that he has done. We heard the testimonies this morning. But Lord, you are faithful to each and every one of us. You have blessed us tremendously, and you have bring us into your fold through your death and your shed blood. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And our Lord took the cup, and he said, Drink, this is a symbol of the blood that was shed on the cross for all of us, our Savior. Behind the pews are little cup holders. If you would place them there, we will collect them later. life on Calvary, but he is no longer just the one who sacrificed. He's the risen Lord. He's the coming Lord. And so we're going to sing together, he's coming again. Why don't we stand together and we'll sing this song as a congregation. And as we're preparing for that song, very soon, we'll go, we're going to exit the elders and the deacons and deaconesses, we're going to take up a free will offering. It's a special offering for benevolent fund, for needs to address in the family of God. And so we thank you for your giving. We're also going to have the tithe and offerings in the entry area. And before, Sister Jennifer is going to take those cards that you filled out the nominating committee list. Some of you came a little later, but we do have some of those for you to fill up. Let us praise and sing to the Lord.
slain, Jesus is coming again, coming again, coming